Welcome to Raising the Flipping Bar, the go-to podcast for aspiring and seasoned real estate investors. I'm your host, Derek Marlin, and I'm the CEO of Elevation. We're a real estate investment company based right here in Denver, Colorado. We'll dive into smart investment strategies, market insights, and essential tips for scaling your real estate ventures. Whether you're making your first investment or your hundredth investment, this podcast is your blueprint for success in the ever-evolving world of real estate investing. Get ready to elevate your real estate game and begin your journey with me. Welcome back to another episode of Raising the Flipping Bar. I am your host, Derek Marlin, and I'm super excited because we have two phenomenal investors and real estate agents. And one of the cool things that we're going to do about this episode is it's with guys that are actually investing out of state. And so most of our stuff is based here in Denver, Colorado, but there are so many things that are translatable. So I'm going to jump here to actually Dallas, Texas, or the DFW area, I should say, and welcome Adam Mitchell and Lance Doty with Home Buying Guys. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks, Thank Derek. You. Appreciate you having us. So the other thing that I'm super excited to have the guys on is they've got a phenomenal social media following with the home buying guys. So we'll give them a chance to do those introductions here in a second. But I was following their social media and they were getting shamed on their vest game. So I wanted to, in solidarity, make sure that I started the episode with a vest and show them that investors in Colorado, you're probably not successful if you don't have a vest of some sort, if you don't have multiple colors and multiple weights. With that said, I am going to take it off because it's like 800 degrees in our studios. This is a little awkward, but I wanted to really make sure that we just got this, this episode going. And now, okay, I'm a little better. I'm not going to overheat. We're ready to rock and roll. So guys, welcome to the program. Thank you for having us. This is fun. Absolutely. A couple of different questions. The way that we always kind of start off the episodes is we're going to talk a ton about real estate, but I would love for each of you guys to go and tell me a bit of a fun fact or something unique or something super interesting or random just to kind of start off the show. So maybe Lance, let's start with you. And then Adam, let's go to you. Give me a fun fact or something crazy that the audience would go, wow, that is interesting. Man, you're putting me on the spot here. I, I feel like I have a lot of them. I'll probably miss something way, way wilder. But I think the most interesting thing about me and to make it somewhat real estate related is I would not be here at all. I have zero passion for real estate. I love what we do. I love helping people. I'm here and as a complete benefactor of Adam being my best friend and us figuring out how we can conquer the world together. And real estate was something that he kind of has drugged me into. Now I'm on podcast because I, I know a little bit about a lot of things. We've done some really epic stuff in, in our short journey together. But I think that's kind of, I mean, I'm driven by helping people. I'm driven by a lot of the things real estate allows me to do. I'm passionate about real estate for those reasons because it brings me opportunities to do things I'm very passionate about. But I, I'm not interested in real estate before I meet Adam. I'm completely here by uh, a great friendship and, and he's kind of always been a, a big brother, a mentor of mine. And, but yeah, I think, I think people assume, man, you have to be really into this, but no, this is just kind of a, a, a byproduct of our friendship and it allows me to accomplish some amazing things and things I am passionate about, but yeah, not, love it. Not, Thank not, you. not interested at all at the very beginning. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, Adam, you, you got a hard act to follow, but which uh, your fun fact, your interesting thing could be real estate, could be totally separate. The floor is yours, my friend. Yeah. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you, Derek, but I wrote a book last year and it's published. Oh. So it's on Amazon and this is not a plug for that, but the book really details sort of how I got from where I started really as a kid growing up and understanding where I'm at to actually fulfilling a vision of becoming a real estate investor full time and how that worked. That book took a long time, but you know, got it done, got it out. It's available on Amazon. I'm super proud of that. There's a little bit of real estate in there, but it's more about figuring out what you enjoy, what you're passionate about. Yeah. I don't talk about it a lot. I probably should talk about it a lot more, but yeah. there it is. Love it. No, that's great. Well, definitely when we get this episode wrapped up offline, I'll have to get your take on the, the pros and the cons and also maybe some of the pain of doing that. So that's awesome. Cool. Thank you guys for starting this episode off the right way. Again, it's cool to kind of get to know you guys. I uh, want a little kind of go back a little bit and tell our audience about how we got connected and how we met. I was kind of looking back through my notes and we've known each other actually for a little while where we met at an investor.
Investor Fuel Conference in your guys' backyard in Dallas, Texas, and it was 2022. So I would love to hear really where you guys are in your journey, what you took away from maybe that conference, and then we'll dive into kind of where you guys are as a business, but maybe just kind of go back to that conference and tell me what some of the takeaways from that conference that you guys enjoyed or maybe conferences in general. Yeah, I can start. We were tagged with speaking at that conference with one of our mentors and good friends, Trevor from Carrot, who was also in attendance and speaking. It was one of our first speaking engagements for a group like that. So that was a really cool experience to be able to actually give some advice to a lot of the investors that were there. But really, I think the biggest takeaway for me personally was meeting you. You know, there wasn't a lot that we're going to learn from that group in general at that meeting, but you know, we just happened to be at the table with you and hit it off and and here we are doing things together. So that that was probably the biggest takeaway for me. Yeah, the, the thing that comes to mind for me that day, that was actually kind of a first event that was within 30 days of me quitting my job. So I was like, we got to put this on social media. I, I do a very poor self promoters. We should probably be cross promoting all the books we write and all the speaking engagements we have way better than we do. But that was an exciting day for me because I was like, oh, I'm going to put this on my personal page and, and kind of let folks in on this leap. And then now as Adam was answering, I'm just kind of thinking how far we've come since then. But I think to Adam's point is saying you know, there's not much we can learn there. It's not that we didn't take away a ton from sure. that. It's just we're so hyper focused on home buying guys. And typically is is investors and, and business owners, we're always hyper focused on next quarter. Do we have the team? Are we? Can we support this marketing channel? So I feel like we do a bad job of sometimes stopping and realizing how far we've come and how far ahead we are from our competition. We were at a mastermind this week, just a quick lunch deal with other competitors of ours. And man, Adam and I were look around the room and we're like, dude, we need to give ourselves some credit here. We're, we're way better off than some of these folks. Of course, we're there to serve and help them too. But yeah, that's what, that's what sticks out for me. Of course, meeting you was great. You, you walked to lunch to meet us on a whim and I think that's what kind of kicked it off. You're actually willing to go to lunch with us that, that first day. To me, it's all about, and I don't know if my audience actually even knows this. I grew up all over the country, um, but I lived in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, right in between Dallas and Fort Worth in a, a town called Grapevine. I went to high school in Grapevine. It was really fun for me to get back because I hadn't been back in about 20 years and I had forgotten about the Southern hospitality. I think it was sitting down next to you, Lance, and it was like, hey man, I don't know if I even had a choice. It was like, you're coming to lunch. And I was like, sweet, let's do it. We just kind of hit it off and I had a chance to meet your lovely wives. I was like, these guys have a really great thing going. And to give you guys a compliment, Normally, I actually make it a point to make sure and sit next to different people at every single break. Let's say it's a three-day conference. If I'm getting up once or twice, I'm going to try to get to around different people, make different connections. But we had such a good time that I was like, screw that. I can meet people at other conferences. So this That's was great. super fun. We'll talk about kind of where our evolution of, of our you know partnership and relationship is going. But no, to me, that was huge. I think it underscores how important networking is at these events. Both of you guys hit the nail on the head. You'll probably take away a couple points from an educational standpoint, wherever you are in your business journey. But to me, it's all about the relationships. It was spot on and I'm glad that we all ran into each other and now we're on a podcast. So that's great. Let me dive a little bit into some of your background too. I would love to know, maybe let's start with Adam on this one. Tell me a little bit more about your background before you got into investing and maybe put some years or some timeframes on it for our audience. Yeah, sure. I'll take you way back and I'll do it very quickly. So in college, I went to school here locally, went to Texas Tech a year, went to UT Arlington, finished up here, lived at home when I was at UT Arlington, was planning to, to go into the finance world. Uh, investment banking is what I was looking at. I had done an internship at Morgan Stanley in Kansas City on a bond trader desk. That was the plan. 9-11 hit. That all changed. I graduated three months later and nobody was hiring. So I went to work for a bank. And at that bank, local bank here in Dallas, I learned how it opened my eyes to real estate. So I was the credit analyst slash draw inspector for this little bank. Oh. They did a lot of lending to custom home builders and remodelers. And I was the one going out there looking at their projects and approving draws and accounting for those records and doing all that stuff. So I learned how to build a house working at that bank. Fast forward a little bit. I had uh, taken another bank job, didn't like it. I ended up going to work for a uh, industrial manufacturer in sales. I wanted to be in sales. That was the main thing. I didn't really care what I sold. I just wanted to be in sales. If it wasn't going to be a lender 
uh, sales position at the bank, then it was going to be something else. So I found a, a, an industrial sales job that gave me a, a car and a expense account and some traveling ability. I went to work for them. And literally that same year, I bought my first rental property. I started to buy rental properties. This is 2000 and continue to accumulate some of those. Around 2008, when things started to get a little shaky in the market, I had six at the time. I sold three of them, kept the three best ones, just kind of put it away for quite a while. I, I always knew I wanted to figure out how to be a real estate investor full time. I just couldn't figure it out. I was thinking, man, if I'm buying these houses, it's going to take me 180 years to have enough <laughs> rental houses to offset my income. By this time, I was making pretty good money at my job. I was making 100000 at 25 years old working for this industrial company. So I'm going like, how am I going to offset this and, and make enough in real estate? So I, I just couldn't figure it out. Kind of got distracted and, and was having success with the W-2 and enjoying that ride and traveling. And here come along, Lance got a job for a distributor of mine. And I basically trained him in the industrial world for what we did as a company, as a manufacturer, and, and he was our customer. So that's how I got to know Lance a little bit. We hit it off pretty easily and pretty quickly. Then I, I met my wife, got married, had kids. Basically after my first kid was born and was almost a year old, I said, man, I, I've done everything I can do for this industrial company. I've hit all the goals. I, I actually lost a promotion to be the regional manager. And then I said, okay, it's time to get out of this and go real estate. How do we do it? How do we figure it out? So I first called my wife and I said, hey, we're going to flip a house. That's how we're going to get into it. The second call I made was to Lance. And I said, Lance, we're going to flip a house. We're going to make this real estate thing a, a reality and make it a full-time thing. Are you in? And I'll, I'll let him explain his answer because it was priceless. <laughs> all right. All right. You got to jump right in that answer, Lance. The, the floor I is love yours, it. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'm in. And, and, but wait, I, I don't have any money, you know? And he goes, I'm your best friend. You don't think I know you don't have any money? And he said, I just need some support. We got the baby. Yeah. You know, I think Kerrigan was six months there first at that time. And I was another outside salesman. He knew my schedule and we, were, we had his expense account. We could eat all the water burger we wanted if I was there to help him. So we self performed a lot. And, he got, we got that first deal on a contract from a wholesaler and, and I was there every day and every Saturday. And that was the beginning of my journey into real estate, that, that phone call. So and that was that 2016, call. right, Lance? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So before 2016, Lance, what was your career path and what was your career journey before you guys got, you know, got hooked up in 2016? Yeah, uh, it was all over the board. I graduated from Abilene Christian University in 2006. Like most folks who go to Christian colleges, uh, you get your lab, you get a dog your sophomore year, you get engaged your junior year, you get married your senior year. That's exactly what I did. Married my high school sweetheart and we were back to Dallas with Lance's fancy degree. I'm going to change the world because I have this degree. I'm the first one in my family with a degree. And, and then the next 10 years, really, I would have good jobs. But, you know, these sales jobs, it's 65K yeah. base, maybe make an extra 20K in commissions. And we were having children and we were, I just kind of bounced around and, and was able to get into industrial sales. That's where I met Adam. And that's really where a lot of things started to change for my family. Working with Adam was a blast. He worked in mean, our first day. He's like, oh, he set up all these cold calls and usually a distributor salesmanship relationship just kind of lunch and a piece out. But we went and worked and it about five cold calls in when I still hadn't been to the new Cowboy Stadium and we were right down the road. And Adam couldn't believe as much as a fan as I was, he's like, dude, you're a big football fan. You've never been in there. I haven't been in. So we scrapped the whole day and went on a tour of the Dallas Cowboys Stadium after those five cold calls and the, the rest is history. But you know, in terms of wrapping my career up to where we're at today, one of my favorite things about my journey, and I'm sure we'll get to this at some point, but Adam and I in the last uh, few years have, have purchased three multifamily properties as well. But I, I like to tell everyone, I was at 28 years old, my wife and our two children, we were still living in a third story apartment in, in Rowlett, Texas. And paycheck to paycheck, it was on the third floor because it was the cheapest. And I didn't have to carry the baby as much as my wife did. So she, she had a lot of nice things to say to me at the end of every day. Uh, but, fa but, but fast forward 10 years later, I would own uh, my first apartment complex in that same town. So I think that's a pretty neat journey and to, ha to have that happen in 10 years. But really the only thing that changed in those 10 years, almost to the day, is really meeting Adam and our friendship. It started with just selling his products, lever pullers, chain falls. 
then he sat me down one day and got me roped into selling Ambit Energy. We had a multi-level marketing. Adam was always looking for that angle before mm -hmm. the real estate that was clicking, that was paying him out. But he was always just like, how do we really put leverage on our time? How do we figure out how we're not answering to these comp plans and these promotions that just slip yeah. through our fingers for no reason? So that's kind of my journey, man. I just kind of bounce around, really good sales guy. Adam knows that and anything Adam ever invests in or buys, I'll probably be his first hire to sell it. I love it. That's a good endorsement. What I'm interested to hear about is everybody starts up a company and people try to come up with different names. Obviously, maybe even our company name is a, a piece of that where you've got a personal brand and then you've got a business. Obviously, you are two guys. You're obviously buying homes. I love the name Home Buying Guys. And for our audience, it'll be in the show notes. You have to check out all their social media, all their digital presence. They've got phenomenal content that they put out as well. I love your logo. It is that cartoonish type of logo. And I think it's perfect for what you guys are doing. But was there a point where you wanted to be you know, Dallas home buyers or some sort of corporate name, or how did the home buying guys put your final stamp on it? Let's roll with this name. Yeah, that was actually our third business name. We started day one with Hilltop Home Buyers. There it and is. then we morph into a more SEO name called We Buy Houses Fast in Dallas .com. Well, that's sexy too. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can pronounce correctly, it's never been pronounced correctly. And then finally, I, I really don't remember how it happened, but we were looking to change that name. And I, Lance, do you remember how Home Buying Guys came to fruition? I just, I just don't remember it. I think I, I, the first time I ever said it, I was on a porch and someone, I was like, hey, it's Lance with We Buy Houses Fast. And I think the lady was like yelling at her husband. He's like, hey, did you bring some Home Buying Guys here? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's us, the Home Buying Guys. And I think I just went back to the office with it and, and it just kind of stuck and and it was available. And the first thing Adam did was trademark it. So we've got that. I think it's in that trademark's in the office, you know? So that was a long, we didn't just come out of the gate and go, Oh, let's, let's be home buying guys. Like we just, that, that's not how it happened. It took two other names before that. And then we obviously had websites before that built upon each other. We think we got it right with the home buying guys name and website, because we learned a lot, obviously from day one and, and how to build that and, and how to put that marketing behind it. I love the story about how you guys came up with maybe a couple iterations to get to the home buying guys. And to me, the takeaway is just be authentic to yourself. I think there's so many different investors out there and everything is so-and-so capital management or so-and-so investment partners. That's even one of the reasons why we shortened our name. We started out originally, it was myself and my dad, and his name is Dennis. We are obviously master, master marketers. And so our company name was D&D &D Management. So that was a real <laughs> ringer. We, we, of course, scrapped that. And my dad retired. I was like, I got to find a different name. I wanted something that was going to be kind of close to what we've got going on in Colorado. And it was Elevation Investment Properties. But I think, Lance, you had a great point. When you're rattling that off on the phone, it's, hey, this is Derek with Elevation Investment Properties. They want to hang up on you even faster than before. Mm -hmm. So wow. we just kind of cut it to Elevation. Same thing, but I think I love your guy's name. Tell me a little bit about, maybe Lance, we'll start with you and what your role is, but I'd love to know what is your guy's day-to-day -day business look like right now? And we'll 100% hit on the multifamily, but like, yeah, what's your bread and butter of what are you guys doing day-to-day -day right now? Well, and before I get to that, I'm just very impressed you didn't go with double D's as the company name. You might've got some unwanted attention there, but maybe- Well said. What we're gonna get hung up on is quick, but that's a great question. What our day looks like now is honestly, completely different than what it even looked like when we started talking about this podcast, I think four months ago. We are now living a vision. We're living our vision. We have a transaction coordinator. We have our lead manager. We've got a chief operation officer. We've got acquisition managers. We're looking for more. It's very surreal. It's surreal to have, you know, not just say, hey, one day we'll have a transaction coordinator, but now that person's Karen and she's great. She brings energy to the office and, and thankfully brings headphones. So Adam could do this podcast right now. I mean, home buying guys is the, it's for me, it's the nine to nine. I mean, it is mm -hmm. every day, all day. There's about 12 to 15 hours a week on the weekends where the phone doesn't ring. But Adam has done a heck of a job of making the phone ring and we've got great leads and we've got great people looking into and following up. But we've got the systems now. We've got this, the Ferrari CRM. We've got every tool, every marketing channel that we desire to have for our staff to, to grow and, and to do our financial, to, to hit our financial goals for this year. We have. And so you're showing up every day. You're making a cup of coffee and home buying guys 
headquarters. And that is just super surreal to me to run into other employees that aren't our wives or Adam. You know, I mean, that's a great question because that is kind of the thing that's changed in the last three months more than anything is we are now living our vision and those people, we have roles and those roles have names. It's super cool. Well, and what I love, and I just want to pause for one second before we go to you, Adam, and I want everybody to rewind that. And I want you to listen to what Lance just said. He said nine to nine. He didn't say nine to five. He didn't. And I'm going to bash kind of some traditional real estate agents. So don't get too pissed off and maybe don't click us off. But it's not like get up at 10, make a couple calls, go have one appointment, 12 hours. And there are days that it's rough. I mean, we just had a crazy day yesterday where I get a lot done in the morning and I'm an early morning person. So it was working from 530 to 10, get a quick workout in and then come and work till about six. And then we had a networking event at our Broadway Collective and you get home at nine o'clock at night. Like there are 12 hour days. There are 14 hour days. Lance, I saw a cool piece of content that you put out where you're in the middle of nowhere in front of an apartment and it's pitch black. I want people to listen that if you want to be successful, we all want to work smart, but sometimes you just got to bust your ass and you got to work hard. So we're going to take a quick break and tell you about the next Elevation Academy. If you're looking to dive deep into real estate investing, this is definitely the event for you. Our academy features over a hundred step process to help you navigate every single thing from market analysis all the way down to every aspect of project management. So this is tailored for both beginners and seasoned investors. And our one day intensive training will equip you with the strategies and insights needed to elevate your real estate investing game. Spots are definitely limited. So click on the link below in the show notes to sign up and transform your approach to real estate investment. Okay, let's get back to the episode. So Adam, let's throw it back to you. I would love to hear more about how Home Buying Guys is structured, what your role is and what you guys are working on through your lens today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm still the CEO of Home Buying Guys. My wife and I, uh, technically own the business. She handles more the design and project manages our flips. I handle the CEO role and set the vision. Lance basically manages all sales. You know, he basically is involved in everything. The only thing I think he doesn't manage is uh, probably accounting and finance, but that's about it. Okay. Today, what that looks like is I'm really trying to train our COO on how to structure the lead sources and how to grow them, how to analyze those properly and, and give him the tools he needs to do that. And I'm also heavily involved in, in trying to build our retail team and set that course so that we can see a lot of growth on that side of our business, which we think there's a lot to be had there. From there, I'm really just trying to step out of, out of the way so that Lance and Brian, who's our COO, and our acquisition folks can do their job. We've come together as an executive team, the three of us, Lance, Brian, and myself, and, and created some goals and, and the plan to get there. I'm letting them go to work and get after it and do it. If they need my support or my help or need to discuss changes, then obviously I'm here for that, but I'm really trying to let, let them do their job and get out of their way. The, the part that I always struggle with letting go is the lead generation side. I, I like that side. I wouldn't say I'm good at it, but I, I do enjoy it. I'm involved in that still quite a bit, which I'm trying to offload some. I'm also involved in a lot of the construction side when we're doing a flip. I really enjoy that side. We're doing our personal house right now, and it's a massive project. So once we get that done or, or close to being done, we'll be back to flipping houses again more regularly. Right now, we're wholesaling basically 100% of what we have come in at the moment as we work through this personal flip. I have to get involved on the construction side a little bit on flips, but Denise has, has done a good job of, of learning that. So the big thing is vision, training these people so that they know what they need to do and getting out of their way so that they can go do their job. For me, it's 7.30 in the morning. I'm here. I usually leave at four. I'm usually with my family until eight o'clock. And then from eight to 9.30, eight to 10, I'm, I'm doing something else related to the business. Weekends, there's a lot of weekend time that I spend doing something, whether it's something on the retail side with customers or construction. I don't mind it at all. I mean, it's not a nine to five. It never will be if you own your own business, but you better damn sure like what you do because you will burn out really quick. Uh, I'm passionate about exactly what we do here and the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I really enjoy the journey, but if I wasn't passionate about this and didn't enjoy the journey, you won't make it. There's too many obstacles. It's too hard to really get through the tough times if you're not super passionate about this. I'll close it with this. 
if we didn't have to make money at this, this is what I would still be doing. That's a good way to look at it. I would say to the audience, find that passionate role for yourself. If it's not what you're doing, spend some time and figure out what that passion is. It may be real estate. It may not be. We had a good example recently with our transaction coordinator. She really thought that maybe going into the realtor side was appealing. She considered that. And then she really took a hard look at what she wanted to do and what her life was like and decided, you know what, I'm not ready for that. And that's totally okay. I think that that's a good exercise for everybody to really go through and, and understand like, where is my passion? What would I be okay with doing day in and day out and actually find joy from that? If it's not real estate or if it's not owning a business and spending hours and hours and hours, especially in the beginning on building that thing, then that's probably not the right direction for you to go. So I'll, I'll close with that. No, that was really, really well said. I think that's the perfect kind of transition to get maybe a little more granular. So for me, I would love to throw it to either one of you guys to tell me a little bit about what is the kind of right now your best lead generation method. I think to your point, Adam, you know, deals are obviously the lifeblood of any business in real estate, whether it's the traditional retail side of finding buyers and sellers or more in our collective world of finding houses to flip, either flip or wholesale. Maybe either one of you guys jump in and tell me what are you guys doing right now in the first quarter of 2024 that's getting you that best legion and that best volume and opportunity? Yeah, let me start and then I'll kick it to Lance. For us personally, we do really well with SEO and Facebook. That is That has been our tried and true bread and butter lead generation one-two punch for a long, long time. But what people need to understand is that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for them. It, it, it's all different. We shoot a ton of video. We put out a lot of content. We're fine being on camera and producing those videos that get picked up on the website for SEO and Facebook. So that works really, really well for us. But that doesn't mean that you as an audience member may go that route. It may not work for you. So you really have to look at what your strengths are and what you're comfortable with and what you're good at, and then find the source that works best for you. Now we do some direct mail. We've got a new cold calling service that we just hired. So we're branching out beyond that now because we need to continue to grow our lead source. But, you know, people there's no one magic bullet. It's different for everybody. All the sources work to some degree. You just have to figure out what works best for you in the situation you're in. For example, if we didn't have a, a website that converted really, really well, the SEO play may be uh, a bad choice. We've kind of set up that model where we drive everything to our websites. Our websites convert extremely well. And so we're putting all the effort, all the content into different sources to then drive those people to the website. That's our model, you know, but it doesn't work for everybody. Lance, I, once you add to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the neatest things about this business, I'll take it back and I'll bring it to the exact question. But, you know, when it was just Adam and I, and we had not even done a transaction yet, we had flipped that first house, but we hadn't even wholesaled a deal yet. Adam ran our business like it was going to have 500 employees. And he ran it that day like it had 500 employees. He was creating SOPs on how to run comps. He was creating all these little things that, you know, that would allow him to free up if he did go on a vacation and give more quality time to his family. That I could watch the video and pull the comps the way he wanted to do that. The other side of that was we wanted to make sure this business wasn't, we, we weren't just becoming business owners of a job we didn't like, right? We didn't want to be putting bandit signs out at three in the morning on Thursday nights. We didn't want to do those things. We wanted to create a system and Trevor at Carrot calls it evergreen marketing. We want something that's always living and breathing and bringing in quality leads and to really create that freedom that entrepreneurs talk about. We wanted a business we took but it's hard to build a website that converts. It's hard to get that. Yeah. You can't just say, hey, I've got 40 grand. Let's just get a, a website that converts. I mean, it, it, this is a seven years in the making process for all of our websites. But we set on that journey and we continued the plan. What I do to bring it to your question today, you know, I see a shift in the market. I see a shift in what sellers know about their home values, about the amount of options sellers now have, even if they are behind and in distress. And we're having to shift. We're having to shift. We're having to pivot. I mean, every month, what worked in January is not working in February. Sometimes we've got our tried and true, our top four lead gen that we, we can bet on will be there. But the five through eight, we're changing that. We're putting more money into this basket to see if that will hit. We're always evaluating those KPIs. 
with us though being where we're at, I talk about living out our vision. Well, that vision costs a lot of money. There's a lot of salaries involved. Yeah. And so now stumbling upon four or five deals, which used to be great, was just it was Adam and I's side hustle. That doesn't pay the bills anymore. So now that number needs to be 14 to 15 deals that we fall into. And so but in terms of the lead gen, we're seeing some stuff come back that we gave up on a long time ago, direct mail being one of them. I think a lot of people went away from it. We're getting a ton of results from it right now. And we've never been good at direct mail. We launched a campaign on December 2nd and, and closed our first deal by the middle of January. So that's pretty cool. We're still seeing that, that trend happening now. And I know that you mentioned it earlier, but I'd love to give our audience a sense of two of these other divisions that you guys are working on. So tell me a little bit about the apartment side of what you guys are focusing on. And then we'll get into one of the things that you guys are building out under the EXP umbrella kind of with us as well. But tell us about the other markets that you guys are getting into. Yeah, we've kind of always had the vision of stepping into multifamily at some point. Our our plan was first, let's get out of the day jobs. We did that. We worked home buying guys and day jobs together for a long time. I worked them five years together side by side. Once our wives were able to get out of their day jobs and come to the business full time, then I left my day job, my W2 job and, and came to home buying guys full time, which just basically means I was now working home buying guys during the day instead of at night, every night. And then Lance did as well. But in the middle of that, we knew that the second step was look for an opportunity to stand up the multifamily side of the business so that we could uh, work towards building wealth, not just you know the transactional cash from wholesaling and flipping day in and day out. So right in the middle of COVID, we had a little bit of slowdown on single family and we decided, hey, let's, let's start this now. This is a good time to start it. Everybody's at home. Let's do some webinars where we can do some sample deals and see if we can get some attention from it and see if we can interest some of the people that we know. So we started basically having webinars with friends and family on a fake sample multifamily deal that we would syndicate and just to, to see if we could actually do it. We actually had a couple of people come to us and go, hey, is that a real deal? Because we want to invest. And Lance <laughs> nice. and I were going, okay, maybe this is going to work. So let's try yeah. it. We kind of started down that journey and started looking at properties, real properties with a broker and finally got one under contract in 2020, 2020. Wow. Yeah. 21 and decided, Hey, let's syndicate this. We ended up having to raise $6 million on that first deal, which is just a brutal experience. Yeah. That's a good um, chunk of change on your first deal. Yeah. It was painful. They don't teach you how to raise capital in school. That's if bad. someone could figure that out, that would be a, a money-making class. From there, we bought two more. So at the moment we have uh, three properties that we own and manage 367 units, two in Dallas, one in Oklahoma city. And kind of taking the last few months just to really be really good operators and stewards of our investors' property and, and money. We syndicated all three of them. So there's investors in them as well. I would say probably in the next two or three months, we'll be ready to look for uh, property number four as the economy starts to change a little bit and, and rates come down. The rates increasing have really put a halt to a lot of multifamily here the last eight months. You know, and just one thing I wanted to, I love doing these podcasts because I get a chance to really promote Adam and what he does for our companies. And for me personally, there's all these little moments in my mind. I can remember where I was standing when I got this call and what that turned into. And it was spring break of 2020 when COVID really hit. The NBA shut down that day. I was on a camping trip with my family. So we're just hiking and I'm always having fun. And Adam's always like looking up business stuff. And so I, the least thing I can do is take his call. Cause I know he's like grinding out. He's got babies at home and I'm just having a blast with my older kids. He's like, Hey man, everyone's going to be at home. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess so. I had no clue what any of this meant. I, I felt detached from it. Cause we, you know, COVID wasn't on the hiking trail where I was at that time. I didn't understand the levity of what had happened, but Adam had as a CEO, that was a big moment for him to, to think like, how can we use this? We didn't know if single family would stop. It stopped for about a week. And then really it took off for us because all of the hedge fund buyers backed out. So Wall Street just shut down completely. And now Zillow had all these people left hanging. People were closing the next day that Zillow backed out on. And so we're able to capitalize that with our single family business. But the, the, the foresight for Adam to say, hey, man, we need to start ha having some multifamily webinars. And guys, when I talk about how green I am on this stuff, 
as he's just taught me how to sell single family wholesale deals. So we're now three years into that. We're clicking, we're doing good. He says multifamily on this phone call and I'm standing on a log on this hike. And I'm like, what, what is multifamily? I don't even know what you're talking about. And he's like, no, uh, apartment complexes. And I'm like, oh, why don't you just say apartments? Like, I, I, I had not even known the word multifamily, but he calls me and he's like, hey, well, I need 10 guys on a webinar, two nights. Can you do it? And I'm like, of course, you know, just, I just need help with this one word. What's multifamily? And then I'll, I'll make it happen. You know, so that's a pivotal moment. We probably did four or five of them and people jumped on them because they were all miserable at home. So we gave them something to do, you know, we, and I, I bet we probably have 40 different individuals and I bet maybe 10 are investors to this day in real deals. And so when you talk about pivotal points in our history, that phone call is a big one. COVID, despite, obviously, I don't mean to speak like it helped us or I'm glad it happened. Sure. I don't mean that way. It was a terrible thing. However, in our business, we were able to stay nimble and offer solutions through the very scary time and help sellers on our single family business. And, and that's what Propel, that was the first year we did 65 deals that year. It also allowed us to start that multifamily conversation. So. You know, Adam's ability to find opportunities through obstacles, that's what he does best when he has the time to process and get creative in our businesses. And there's been times where that has lacked because we've been over, we've been over leveraged with too much on our plate. So he has to do a good job of clearing that time, giving himself time to think so we can keep everything we're doing moving forward. That's one of his best traits as a leader. So we have been having such a great conversation with Adam and Lance at the Home Buying Guys that we're actually going to make this into a two-part episode. So we're going to take a quick break. Definitely stay tuned. Next week, we're going to have a second episode with Lance and Adam with the Home Buying Guys. Check them out online. Find them at the Home Buying Guys. They've got phenomenal Instagram content. They've got a great YouTube page. And stop back for phenomenal additional content in part two. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Raising the Flipping Bar. If you found value in our insights and stories, let's keep the conversation going. Connect with me on social media and be sure to share this episode with friends or colleagues who might benefit. Your feedback and reviews help us grow and reach more listeners like you. So please, if you enjoyed this episode, leave us a review. Thanks again to the Elevation Academy for sponsoring today's show. If you're interested in learning more, click the link in the show notes below. And remember, every property tells a story, every deal brings a lesson. Keep reaching for those goals and we'll catch you on the flip side.